Today we're going to be exploring the entire Red Dead Redemption Mysteries Iceberg and revealing the deepest secrets of the game. 95% of my viewers are unsubscribed, so if you want to see more videos like this, please subscribe. Starting off with Tier 1, these are the mysteries that most Red Dead Redemption 2 players have heard of, and as long as you've played the game a little bit, you should probably know a lot of these. For the first entry on the iceberg, we've got Undead Nightmare, which was a DLC for Red Dead Redemption 1, where you play as John Marston, trying to find the reason for a zombie invasion of the lands in Red Dead Redemption 1. John has to fight off the zombie hordes and liberate towns from them throughout playing this, and if you guys haven't played this, definitely get a copy of Red Dead Redemption 1, the Game of the Year edition, and play Undead Nightmare, because it is pretty fun to play, but a lot of people did want Undead Nightmare to return for Red Dead Redemption 2, but sadly it looks like this game mode will forever be constrained to just be for Red Dead Redemption 1. The next entry we have is Black Bell, who is a woman gunslinger in the Red Dead Redemption 2 Stranger Mission, the noblest of men and a woman, who says that Jim Calloway, Jim Boy Calloway, is kind of a sham and would never really fight with them when they actually did fight the other people in their gang. But she's the only character in this mission that doesn't actually fight the player character and like get killed by them. So her fate after this mission is forever unknown, but I'm assuming she's fine just because she's a badass woman and she did survive all this time without basically anyone else's help. Arthur in New Austin. Cut cutscenes and dialogue shows that Arthur likely would have been allowed in New Austin and was likely cut due to time like they just didn't have enough time to like put him in new austin and account for every single scene so they just said fuck it we're not gonna allow him to be in new austin or blackwater just because you know he was wanted there which does make sense according to the game but it seems like they did want him there and there's a couple missions where he likes becomes a sheriff in new austin but this was likely cut pretty reasonably early in development and they just didn't you know access it far enough and they realized it would have taken too much time and they wanted to get the game out so they cut Arthur from New Austin. Red Harlow. Red Harlow is the main protagonist of Red Dead Revolver and the namesake for the Red in the Red Dead Redemption like franchise. And he also is referenced in both Red Dead Redemption and Red Dead Redemption 2 as like an old Western legend. And we don't really know if he's actually a real person in either of those games or just kind of like this legend. But I mean, Landon Ricketts is also there. He's kind of in the same way as a legend. So he could also be there. A lot of people also think Uncle is Red Harlow, but I feel like that's pretty not true at all like everyone can tell it's not true but some people really like to say oh my god uncle's red harlow either way though red harlow is a really cool character and if you do like the red Dead redemption series definitely go check out red dead revolver hidden cheat codes in red dead redemption 2 you can find the hidden cheat codes in the newspapers in red dead redemption 2 so if you do go pick them up sometimes like at the bottom of the newspaper there will just be like a random phrase there and if you do input those into like the cheats menu you can actually get like either free stuff infinite dead eye unlimited money or like more money and just a ton of other things that i think are really interesting but don't really affect the game too much so it's not like going to ruin your experience if you do use these cheat codes but it's not really going to help you in that big way either so i don't know it's a pretty cool thing but it's just kind of like a little easter egg from rockstar and a little way to help you out if you are playing through on your second time the buck and the coyote the buck and the coyote are the two spirit animals for arthur in red dead redemption 2 if you have low honor you're going to see the black coyote and if you have high honor you're gonna be able to see the buck and i think this is a pretty cool way of like showing the character what they have like the coyote's kind of a little worse in the sense that you know you're a worse version of arthur and the buck's more of like this nice peaceful character while the coyote's kind of this predator but it is really interesting because you'll see like it's like sean's death it's when he gets tuberculosis and there's a lot of times in the game when they will just show up and you just get like a little cutscene of the buck or the coyote and it kind of shows you the path you're heading down as arthur if you're high honor or low honor explosive rifle this either refers to the elephant rifle which can only be found in red dead redemption online or either the explosive ammo but either way these are pretty much like two of the funniest things that you can kind of do to people in the game because you can absolutely blow them up either if you use the elephant rifle or the explosive ammo it's a pretty cool thing to use but they they're kind of op and if it was actually in like the regular game the single player game the elephant rifle would be just kind of insane and you know a fun thing to use on people but i understand why they didn't allow it into the regular game because what's the point of arthur having an elephant rifle down he's he's not like he's taking out an elephant ever so i don't know bigfoot in red dead redemption one in undead nightmare there is a stranger mission in tall trees where you do hunt down bigfoot and it's like 
you're like, wow, there shouldn't be any Bigfoot. And then you do find one and one finally talks to you. And there's the classic Red Dead Redemption 1 line, you eat babies. But, you know, the Bigfoot actually doesn't eat babies. He's actually a really nice guy. And it's the last one. And John Marson basically condemned it to extinction because he hunted down every last one except for this one guy that talks. So, I don't know. It's a really cool and, like, dark mission. And it really fits the Red Dead Redemption 1 tone. And a lot of people think that the Red Dead Redemption Bigfoot is also connected to the GTA Bigfoot. But I don't really think that's that much of a case or like some of the large skeletons in Red Dead Redemption 2 where there are like these super big bodies that, you know, definitely aren't like a human and probably not like a giant either. So something right in between, which the Bigfoot could fit, but there's nothing in Red Dead Redemption 2 that kind of fits the same Bigfoot vibe. So I don't really see that as the case either. Dutch's head injury. Dutch supposedly got a head injury from hitting his head during the trolley mission in chapter four when they robbed the trolley station. After this, people say his like actions got a lot more erratic with them robbing the bank in San Denis, them killing Angelo Bronte, and he just did a lot more things and like started sympathizing with Micah a lot more after this point. But you can also say it's a similar time to when Jose got killed and like Arthur kind of turned against him in a way. So Dutch did kind of lose his support system at this time as well. So I could see that that being more of the main in Thing. and it seemed like Dutch was always kind of doing erratic things even before this head injury so I don't really see this as a big theory or case but you know it is kind of an interesting thing to think about no matter what because I mean if he really did get a concussion at this point definitely did impact the things at least in the next couple days or weeks. Fort Mercer in Red Dead Redemption 2. Fort Mercer in Red Dead Redemption 2 is actually controlled by the Del Lobo gang and there's not really much going on with it but it is kind of interesting that bill kind of takes over the fort mercer and just all of new austin in the next four years after this and you know fort mercer is kind of not really used at all in red dead redemption 2 when it is such a big part of red dead redemption 1 being the place where the game starts and kind of the main part of the first chapter so i don't really know exactly what this entry means but it is kind of interesting to look at Fort Mercer and how like little it's used in Red Dead Redemption 2 when it is such a big part of Red Dead Redemption 1. The Aberdeen Pig Farm is one of the coolest, like not stranger missions because it's not a stranger mission, but like strange in encounter that you can do in Red Dead Redemption 2. It's one where you meet two siblings who are like incest siblings as well. And they're just really weird and they try and, you know, take Arthur's money after drugging him. And I mean, not doing any thing to him besides that but like taking his money after that and then you can eventually you know once they do that you can go back and kill them and whatnot but it is just one of the coolest like side encounters that you can do in Red Dead Redemption 2 and it's just like they're really really creepy things so it's definitely a big thing in the Red Dead Redemption community and just one of the coolest side encounters in the entire game. The next entry is the Evans Repeater. I think the Evans Repeater is one of the best weapons in Red Dead Redemption 2, and you can check out my Red Dead Redemption 2 weapons tier list and see where it's going to rank there. But I just think in general, it is a pretty cool weapon, and I think you can unlock it in Chapter 3 after the American Distillation mission where you destroy the Lemoyne Raiders distillery. But there's not really much else going on with it besides that. Vanderlyn Gang Graves. Throughout the map, you can find the Vanderlyn Gang members' graves, and you do have to do it for an achievement where you visit all the graves that you can find on the map. I think they're all there except for Molly O'Shea's who doesn't actually have a grave but everyone else does and you definitely go check them out if you haven't gotten that achievement and it's just a pretty cool thing to pay your respects to you know everyone that died in the Vanderlyn gang. Jack Marson's real father. Some players have theorized that Jack Marson's father is not John because throughout the game Arthur and you know other people will say that he looks like Javier or you look more like a Williamson than a Marston and just like a ton of other people instead of John being his real father and just because Abigail was a prostitute before being a member of the gang and like while she was a member of the gang she was sleeping with the other members of the gang before she met John really but I feel like it's pretty clear that Jack is John's son especially when in Red Dead Redemption 1 it's they're all like oh you look exactly like your father and like oh he does also look like Javier it's pretty clear he looks way more like John than he does like any other members of the gang so I think it's pretty clear that they expected him to be John's son even if he's not really a good father figure 
The Strange Man is one of the coolest characters in Red Dead Redemption 1, and he also is in Red Dead Redemption 2 in like a little cabin you can find in the bayou. And he is one of the weirdest characters because he knows everything. A lot of people speculate him to be like Cain, son of God, or just like God or the devil. A lot of different people speculate him to be a lot of different things, but I feel like he's just kind of this, you know, Grim Reaper type character where he sees when people are going to die, he kind of knows when they're going to die, and he just, you know, takes out their their fate. And I just think it's he's a really interesting character that's throughout the game, and you can't really do anything to him because, you know, he's he's like a godlike character. And he's just one of the creepiest characters in all of Red Dead Redemption, and people still are speculating on what he is to the Red Dead Redemption universe to this day. So I think it's just a really cool thing like that, and he's just one of the most interesting characters and I still want to know what his whole point of being in the game is. Jenny's Faith. Jenny's Faith is a Red Dead Redemption 1 stranger mission where you find this woman in the desert and she's just like passed out from, you know, not drinking enough water and John eventually does get her medicine. She says, John, can you get me medicine? Or like basically the same thing. And when John does eventually give her medicine, she says, oh my God, it must be an act of God. I'm going to stay out here. And eventually when you do come back on her body, she's dead. And, you know, while John does try to get her out before that she does want to stay in the desert because john was the one who saved her from death and she thought it was an act of god it's just a really like creepy kind of little side mission and it really just fits the red dead redemption one theme of just like this creepy and weird western theme the wreck of the serendipity this is where dutch is theorized to be hiding in red dead redemption one when john is tasked to be finding him in west elizabeth but clearly he's not hiding here and this was actually a whole setup trap for Dutch and his gang to take out John and take out the, the agents Ross in Fordham, but it doesn't actually go right and you know John fights his way out of it. But this is just a really weird thing because this is not in Red Dead Redemption 2. I don't know if it's an oversight by Rockstar to not put it in, but this is a ship that's clearly been there for like 20, 25 years, and that would clearly line up with the time that Red Dead Redemption 2 is there. And a lot of people think it's the Blackwater Ferry, but if you do look at the two ships, like or like hear this the eyewitness encounters of the blackwater ferry they're not the same thing and this serendipity has definitely been there before like it should be there during red dead redemption 2's game time but it's not don't know if it's a rockstar oversight or not but either way it's something that should have been in the game coulter coulter is the first town that you find in red dead redemption 2 and it's where the whole game starts it's the abandoned mining town that the vanderland gang does move into during the first couple missions of the game and it just kind of is a cool area, but it actually was abandoned, I think about 10 years before the game started, and it was abandoned after a really big storm happened, and all this area kind of froze over. So I don't really know why there isn't any land here, because it seems like people are surviving here, at least the Adlers survived here. So I guess there should be a town up here, and I wish Red Dead Redemption did have a town up here, because there's no reason that there should be nothing in Amberina when I, I'd say it's a pretty solid place to live, at least in certain parts. So I wish there's a town here or like something in Coulter in Amberino, but there's not. But Coulter's still a really cool town no matter what. Mac and Davy Callender are two members of the Vanderlyn gang that were killed in the Blackwater heist right before the game starts. Davy is the one who lives until Coulter and Mac is the one who Agent Milton kills after he was supposedly shot up a lot in the Blackwater heist. And I just think they're really interesting characters and a lot of people want them to be the main characters of Red Dead Redemption 3 if they like do go into the start of the game. But it seems like these guys are really bad people like Micah and Arthur and a lot of them describe them to be a lot more like Micah than you know Arthur. So like a much worse character, and just bad people in general. And I don't really think that would work in terms of the whole Red Dead Redemption series where like playing as bad characters that are supposed to be bad and like low honor characters instead of like these good characters. So I don't think that should happen, but you know, I don't really know what Rockstar is gonna do with Red Dead Redemption 3. The fate of Karen Jones. Karen Jones is a character that kind of does go off the deep end as Red Dead Redemption goes on, where she just gets drunker and drunker and drunker as or after Sean dies. And Tilly says that she doesn't know what happened to Karen after she left the gang because they just kind of lost contact with her. Her and Mary Beth all lost contact and they likely think that she drank herself to death somewhere because they couldn't really find any traces of her. And I feel like that's probably the most likely thing, but hopefully, you know, she got her out safely and is doing well somewhere. But I kind of doubt it just because she was such an alcoholic at this point in the game. 
Jake Adler. Jake Adler is Sadie Adler's husband, and he's the body you find, like, or like Micah finds right as they are about to go into Sadie's cabin. And he's kind of the reason why the characters know that it's a trap and the O'Driscolls are actually in the house because they do see Jake's body in like a cart, I believe. Micah sees the body and they're like, oh shit, it's a trap. And then they start firing on the O'Driscolls. But I mean, Jake seems like a pretty cool character and you can meet him in Red Dead Redemption online, but they don't really get a big part and you just kind of, you know, meet them and they're kind of thrown in as some just extra Easter egg content to please the fans. The Aztec mask is actually the source of the plague in Red Dead Redemption 1, Undead Nightmare, and Abraham Reyes finds it and tries to use it to use its power, but it eventually does send the zombie curse plague, whatever you want to call it, in Red Dead Redemption's map, and John gets it back from Abraham Reyes and fights his way down into the tombs where Reyes found it to put it back in its place, and that kind of does resolve the whole Undead Nightmare thing, even though John does also become a zombie as well in the epilogue. Nigel and Gavin is a reference to this character that you meet called Gavin's friend, who if you kill him, I believe you get to see a letter that says Nigel. So a lot of people expect his name to be Nigel. A lot of people think he's a schizo because he's always calling out for Gavin. And he probably is. He probably does have some mental deficiencies. Some people think Nigel and Gavin are the same person. Some people think it's just Gavin and he's making up Nigel. Or I don't know, there's a ton of different theories about this guy. But either way, he's one of the most interesting characters and someone you will always love to see when you're playing Red Dead Redemption 2 until you see him way too much and then you want to put a bullet in his brain. But he still comes back every time. So he's just a great character and I love to see him in every Red Dead Redemption 2 playthrough. Seth Breyers in online. Seth Breyers is a main character in Red Dead Redemption 1. He's one of the people that helps John out get through his whole mission. But he was actually supposed to be in Red Dead Redemption online and he has like an unused player model that you can you know test out and see right here but it did seem like rockstar cut this content as well as just cutting a lot of the stuff with red Dead redemption online and it seems like we'll get a lot of content that will never come out like seth briar in online so this is going to be something that will forever be left to the mystery of our minds bill williamson's sexuality or just bill is gay bill is clearly a gay character if you do see and like read some of his notes he was kicked out of the army for indecent exposure and it seems like you're just doing a lot of weird things to like kieran and you're just doing a lot of things that were like i don't know if he's necessarily just gay or bisexual but he definitely is into men he just does a lot of weird things with the other men in the camp and always you know loves to just be kind of a weirdo to people and Bill will also ask Arthur about his time with the rapist in the, the swamp of Lemoyne. So if Arthur does go see that, Bill will say, oh, you, I met a guy that knew you. And, you know, that guy is definitely gay because the dude. So Bill definitely had some experience with him. And there's just a lot of clues that suggest that Bill is either gay or bisexual. So, you know, it's a pretty clear thing that Bill is gay. You can definitely go check out some other people's videos on it. They've got a lot of great ones about Bill. The Chupacabra is a mythical creature that can be found in Undead Nightmare, similar to the Bigfoot, and there's also a unicorn in Undead Nightmare. But you have to get to Master Rank or Master Hunter Rank 4, and they'll randomly spawn somewhere in Nuevo Paraiso. And I think a lot of people say this is a very, very glitched thing, so it's like a hard thing to kill, and it's just overall a hard thing to get to spawn. So just something you'll probably never see, even if you do play Undead Nightmare a lot, and you do get to Master Rank Hunter 5. But it is like the overall master achievement to get in Red Dead Redemption 2's or Red Dead Redemption 1's Undead Nightmare. So if you are going to play this and you do want to be a super completionist, this is what you're going to have to get. And I don't know, it's overall the, like the top thing to get in Red Dead Redemption 1's Undead Nightmare. Now we move on to tier 2 where a lot of the experienced players should know these, but if you're a casual player, you might not know. Mythical Horses. In Red Dead Redemption 1's Undead Nightmare, there are about four mythical horses that you can find and tame and they should pop up on the map and it should say like where to find the mythical horse they'll be like oh in Nuevo Perry so there's a mythical horse that you can find and then go tame it and they all have their own like special ability like this one can like set all the zombies on fire and I think this is honestly my favorite one I always use one in Undead Nightmare and just overall they're all pretty cool and you should like want to tame all of them but there are a couple of them that I believe you can only tame after the game ends in Undead Nightmare, so like they're not as achievable, but they do add to the whole mythical setting and element of Undead Nightmare. 
Edmund Lowry Jr. Edmund Lowry Jr. is the main character of the Stranger Mission American Dreams and a serial killer. You can find his like victims bodies all around the map and you eventually like put together a map to find his hiding place and it's a really cool like kind of detective mystery and you kind of get to piece it all together as you find these bodies but it's not that interesting and it is a pretty cool stranger mission but like it's not that detective -y. it's kind of just like you see it on the map and you put it together and then you wait a little bit and then you find another body and you put it together but i do think it is a pretty cool stranger mission in the fact that there's like a serial killer and you can kind of piece it all together in your own way but you do get to see his backstory. He does have a pretty solid backstory. And then eventually when you do get to take him to the sheriff, he does like fight off the sheriff and you can either save, save the sheriff or just let him fight off the sheriff himself. But either way, I really, really like this stranger mission. Edmund Lowry Jr. has a pretty crazy backstory and just overall is connected to a lot more stuff than it seems like in Red Dead Redemption 2. The Antler Knife. The Antler Knife is a knife that you can find from a dead hunter where he's trapped under a bear that he killed previously. The knife isn't all that different from a normal hunting knife, but it's kind of interesting to see the whole scene where the hunter died. And you do get like a cool, interesting, rare item if you do, you know, take the knife from the hunter. Charlotte Balfour's Stalker. You can actually find a, a character outside of Emerald Station who describes a woman similar to Charlotte, a widow who's on her own and how he's been watching her from outside the bushes. It's a crazy little story from this guy, but he's actually one of the creepiest characters in the entire game. And when looking at his campsite, you can see that he has handcuffs and naked photos of women, showing that he's very much a creep and probably going to do some bad things to Charlotte if you don't stop him before then. Otis Miller's Treasure. Otis Miller is a legendary RDR2 gunslinger similar to Landon Ricketts and you can find his treasure by piecing together two halves of a treasure map which you can find by killing specific hermits in the game. I believe one is in Roanoke Ridge and one is in the very northern part of West Elizabeth but after putting the map together you can find Miller's Cave where you can find a little bit of you know treasure and his specific revolver which is made out of all gold and is just a really cool thing and there's also six erotic photographs so if you do need any of those john needs a little bit of those when he gets a little bit bored with abigail he can use those pleasance is an abandoned town in red dead redemption 2 which was founded in 1883 and abandoned after a massacre where almost all of the town members were killed many people have theories about the disappearance from a plague hitting the town as there's supposedly signs of plague where it says like oh plague keep out or that the town worships satan and they all off themselves together because there's no cross on the town's church and just overall there's a ton of different theories about what happened with pleasance but either way there was a massacre of some kind that went down here and just overall, it's a really creepy town that if you do go and check it out. Haunted Tumbleweed. In Red Dead Redemption 1, Tumbleweed has been abandoned like its name implies, but players believe there were Easter eggs that either showed that the town was haunted or just overall made it a lot more creepy. I mean, of course, an abandoned town is gonna be creepy, especially in like the early Red Dead Redemption 1 era when there's stuff like Herobrine and a lot of other like creepy, like imaginary tales of like game developers adding characters in to make it a little bit more scary and just overall like there are a couple things in tumbleweed that have like a little bit creepy connotations where there is a poorly implemented cheat code i believe called the devil got into that beast which is actually in the uh, church in tumbleweed and a lot of people think that's an associate with the devil but i think overall it's just like Tumbleweed's a creepy town because it's abandoned and because Rockstar wanted to make something that's relatively creepy. There's not really any hauntedness with it. I mean, maybe there is, but and maybe I'm wrong, but I just don't think it's haunted at all. I think it's more of just, oh, it's an early town that's kind of creepy and haunted. So people just went with that. The Night Folk are a group of people that live in Lemoyne swamps who are extremely gruesome. They're basically like the Murphy brood, but just even weirder. They speak their own language don't have any clothes on and they basically one shot you whenever they hit you and just overall are extremely creepy especially when you can only encounter them in the swamps but they're like one of the weirdest groups in the entire game i think them and the murphy root have a lot of the same encounters where they like the hanging body but there's one encounter where you meet this like screaming young woman and then the the night folk just attack you from there 
I don't really know why exactly they want to kill you or attack the player character, but they're one of the creepiest things you can see in the night, especially when you're going through the swamps, which is already a creepy thing to go through at nighttime during Red Dead Redemption 2. The Sand Denis Vampire is a character that can be found if you find his five writings around Sand Denis beforehand. Arthur or John will draw a map leading to the vampire's final location in Sand Denis by drawing a pentagram and then they all meet in the middle where if you go there at midnight, you can see him chomping on his next victim. Then you can decide to either save the victim, I'm pretty sure the victim's dead at this point, but you can either fight off the vampire, or you can just let him go, and the vampire just doesn't do anything to you. But if he does attack you, he can kill you in one hit, but if the player does kill him, he will drop a unique dagger and some bat wings, you know, kind of referring how vampires are also like can turn into bats at some points and in, in certain fairy tales and whatnot but this is one of the coolest things and one of the creepiest just secret encounters in all of red dead redemption 2. the jaguaro panther is the final legendary animal who can only be found after completing master hunter rank 9. it's one of the hardest like legendary animals to kill all the other ones are i'm not gonna lie really easy to kill but this one supposedly is a lot harder to do and just overall, if you do find it and hunt it, you can actually complete Master Hunter rank 10, which is really cool and like a nice achievement to like finish the game off. American Appetites. This is a Red Dead Redemption 1 stranger mission where John investigates missing people in Armadillo and finds out that it's a cannibal that's killing them all. One of the victims injures the cannibal and he tries to play it off as like, oh, the guy attacked me. But you realize that the cannibal is the bad guy there because he tries to eat the guy after you leave him with each other but you eventually get the option to either kill the cannibal or let the cannibal eat the guy and of course most people should you know kill the cannibal because what's the point in eating people that's just a crazy thing to do so i mean i always put a bullet in that guy's head gertrude braithwaite she's a member of the braithwaite family that was locked up because she's disfigured they've locked her in an outhouse and if you actually take penelope there she'll say she'll try to help to get gertrude out but in the epilogue you can see that gertrude is actually starved to death which is a crazy thing in general like they really locked up a member of the family because she was disfigured and like i kind of understand it because you're rich and like wealthy family you don't really want someone like this like ruining your image but still, it's just a crazy thing to lock someone up in an outhouse because they look a little different from you. The Meteor House and Meteorite. In Roanoke Ridge, you can find a solo cabin, which looks normal from the outside, but on the inside, you can see that a meteorite killed the family while they were eating a meal. If you actually pick up the meteorite, you can reduce your environmental damage by 10%, and there are a couple other meteorites spread throughout the map, but that will be discussed in depth in a couple of the other entries. The giant in Amberino. A giant can be found and spoken to in Amberino. You actually have to have studied 30 different species of animals before encountering his character, but he's hidden behind a cave wall, and the only way to actually like find him and talk to him just like this is you have to find him in the game files because they do actually have a PD model of him, but it seems like a lot of like the animations weren't fully done, so they didn't want him to be released into the game. So they just hit him behind a wall and you know, he is kind of a cool character and there are a couple cool encounters with him. But overall, I just don't think he's all that interesting of a character. And I just wish we were able to see him because it's kind of lame that he's just hidden behind a wall. Ches Porter in Clausen's Rest. Ches Porter is a set of cabins where a family that doesn't really visit the outside world lives. They have their own dialect and are known to rob and murder other people. Javier and Arthur can rob their house during chapters two and three, and while doing the robbery or before the robbery, you can actually overhear them talking about a woman who they kept prisoner in the woods, and they were like, you know, going out to, I don't know, do stuff and do weird stuff to her. Either way though, down the road from Ches Porter is a homestead that's actually boarded up and has two deceased children's bodies inside. Their mother left them a letter saying not to leave unless she came back, and that she was going to get their money back from men, resulting in players connecting the two incidents together. They're also like really close to each other, and it does sound like there was a woman that these people were keeping boarded up, and it kind of makes sense that these two would be connected in some way. But there's no definitive connections between the two, but I definitely think they are connected in some sort of way. The Ruins of Limpany. Limpany is an abandoned town in New Hanover that Arthur can visit. It's right by the Horseshoe Overlook campsite, and it w seems like the whole town was burned down recently enough before the game started. It's also in Red Dead Redemption Online, but I would assume it got burned down right before then. But there are a bunch of Cornwall kerosene 
and tar barrels around the property. So people either believe that like Cornwall like owned the town and he burned it down or a rival burned it down. Either way, it is a pretty cool and interesting town. There is some gold there. And just overall, it's just like a really weird town that has not that much lore to it. And overall, there's a lot of theories behind it. Okray's Run Tribute. Okray's Run, the lake where Hamish the Veteran lives, was actually named after the former voice actor for Uncle in Red Dead Redemption 1, John Okray, who passed away during the development of Red Dead Redemption 2, so they named this lake after him in memoriam. The Old Tomb is an ancient burial site in Roanoke Ridge, New Hanover. The Viking helmet and hatchet can be found here, showing that was probably made by Vikings. Old World Scripts is a runestone that can be found in the more, most northeast section of the map, and it's engraved with Phoenician letters, which can be translated to, we arrived by boat, beautiful land, gracious people, so we left them to live in peace. Both these points of interest point to the fact that the Vikings reached America before any other Europeans, and likely in Red Dead Redemption 2, they also did, but they never reached this far west, like they never reached as far west as uh, Roanoke Ridge would be, but it is just kind of a cool little Easter egg and nod that the Vikings were here before any other Europeans. Charles Kinnear's Flying Machine. Charles Kinnear is a stranger that John can meet in New Austin who's building a glider because he believes he can fly. John gives him the materials for the glider. Kinnear will welcome him to the Virgin Flight where Kinnear realizes he built the glider improperly while in the air and falls to his death. This is a little bit of an Easter egg to a guy in, I believe, Paris who fell to his death while kind of doing the same thing. And just like overall to the Wright brothers because they kind of built a similar glider even though they didn't die in their virgin flight. But I just think overall it's a pretty cool and interesting little Easter egg that they threw in there. Francis Sinclair, Time Traveler. Francis Sinclair is a stranger that Arthur or John can meet in Red Dead Redemption 2 who asks him to find 10 different rock carvings throughout Red Dead Redemption 2's map for him. After completing this task, Arthur or John can return to his cabin where they encounter Francis's mother who's holding Francis as a baby and this little thing on the wall that shows like Francis time traveling through a bunch of different worlds and like times and also Francis is supposedly connected to the Epsilon program in GTA because he has the same mark as the people from the Epsilon program do and it says like that is the way they shift from each paradigm similar into like a tra time travel way either way there's some connected lore between this and GTA 5's epsilon program and overall this is just way too deep for me and if you do want to check out some more theories there are some much better ones than just this abandoned trading post this is a poi that can be found in roanoke ridge where a couple of random items can be found but if you do come here at night a lantern will be lit showing that it might not be that abandoned after all there's not really any specific mystery with this one so i don't really know why it's on this list tommy after the fight after the fight with Arthur, where Arthur beats the shit out of Tommy, Tommy can be found in the A Quiet Time mission in the Valentine Saloon, or just around town, I believe, and you can see him, and he's just not really a human anymore, he's a vegetable, he can't really talk anymore, he just talks in these grunts, and it seems like Tommy is like mentally disabled somehow, like Arthur broke a part of his brain, and now he just kind of has to live with that, like... Arthur was saved by Downs and like I guess it was kind of a weird way this is karma like he got tuberculosis for basically like killing Tommy in a way because he has no brain cells left I don't know it's a crazy thing and I think there is kind of a theory of like the karma there because Downs stopped him from like fully killing Tommy but still Arthur like got killed in his own way because of him mentally disabling Tommy so I don't know it's a really cool thing and the fact that you actually can see what happened to Tommy after the fight is just a great thing and shows that Arthur should really be a better person after this. The rare rolling block rifle this weapon can be taken from one of the bounty hunters who was after Trelawney in the mission Magicians for Sport but there's not really that much interesting else about it besides it being like this rare weapon that takes up a different slot in your inventory even though it's just a little bit better than the regular rolling block. I don't understand why they just didn't just make a different weapon instead of this, but it is kind of cool in its own way. John the Drunk. John is a character that you can meet at the Smithfield Saloon or just the regular saloon in Valentine who just rants about random things like his resentment of different ethnic groups and often will just insult random people he meets. Basically whenever you go to the saloon you can hear 
this guy talking about random things. He's just such an asshole. And the funny thing is, if you do put on like the same raccoon hat that he wears, this guy will get pissed off at you. And I mean, he kind of just gets pissed off at everyone, but it's kind of funny that you can like make him even more mad by wearing the exact same hat as him. Bonnie McFarlane's lover. You can loot a random man outside of Van Horn, where it seems like he was involved in some sort of shipwreck and he's like still alive in some point, but he's not really alive and he says like, oh, I never stopped loving her, tell her that. And he has a letter on him addressed to Bonnie McFarland detailing his love for her and how he's going to come back for her after he became a rich man, but clearly he did not become a rich man and come back and save her and his destiny was to die right there and for Arthur to lose his body, which is really funny. And that's why, you know, Bonnie did never find a, a man to love her because this guy, her true love, died before he could, you know, bring her back. Either way, though, it's a really cool, like, little Easter egg that ties it back to Red Dead Redemption 1 and a character that's, like, pretty important in Red Dead Redemption 1, even without, like, it being a really big, overt Easter egg. The Lenora View Tragedy. In a random encounter, a stranger will show you a man who fell off the cliff and died. And if you go further up the road, you can go to this man's cabin where he says he'll be back in a few days after picking up his new wife, Mildred. Soon after, you can find a letter at his cabin wondering where he is and says that he wishes she abandoned him before they got married. And it's just like one of the saddest encounters you can find in Red Dead Redemption 2 because these people had the happiest time night of their lives when they're getting married and this guy as soon as as he was going to pick up his wife and start his new life with her he immediately falls off the edge of the cliff and dies and the guy just starts laughing at him pointing at his body which is just i don't know it's really funny and it's just one of the saddest like side encounters in all of red dead redemption 2 tier three now these are mysteries that most experienced players don't even really know or just know a little bit about Manito Glade Hermit. The Manito Glade Hermit is a character that you can find in Roanoke Ridge, right next to Annisburg. He's a small man that will always get mad when everyone's anyone is in his vicinity, likely a classic Napoleon complex. And there's not really that much special about him, but if you do take him out and then loot his house, you can also get a rare shotgun, which isn't that much different from the regular one. And I'm pretty sure you can also get part of the map in the Otis Miller like treasure map if you do actually want to find the two maps and put them together. The Wolfman. The Wolfman, or like the Feral Man, is a character that you can come upon in Roanoke Ridge near Annisburg, where you can see him acting like a wolf. He basically just goes on all fours and kind of runs along like that. And on your third encounter of him in Roanoke Ridge, you can actually follow him back to his cave, where he's going to sick his wolves on you. And if you do kill the wolves, he will scream out in agony on the floor. And if you read his journal, you realize that he used to be a regular boy, but left his parents to live in the wilderness, and he found the wolves as pups and eventually became kind of like their pack leader and, you know, a member of their family. So it is a really, really sad story. But at the same time, this guy literally attacked you for basically no reason in a way. I mean, if you do follow him back to his cave. So I don't know. It's, it's a pretty bad story no matter what, but it is just one of the most interesting like side stories in all of Red Dead Redemption. Marco Dragic's Robot. The robot is a character made in the side mission A Bright Bouncing Boy where Marco Dragic brings this robot to life. He's actually based off of Nikola Tesla's character in real life but the robot eventually unalives him in a kind of Frankenstein-ish way where the creation kills the creator and then runs away. You can eventually find the robot in the mountains near Coulter where he basically agonizes for his father saying Papa over and over and over again basically just showing that he never really meant to kill his dad, if you want to call it that. And, you know, there's some kind of accident that made him kill his dad. The Ghost of Agnes Dowd. Agnes Dowd is a ghost that can be encountered in Blue Water Marsh at night calling for her lover. There's over like 16 different encounters that you can get with Agnes Dowd in the marsh, but her story is that she kind of fell in love and was impregnated by a man before he left her for another woman. Eventually, she convinced him to come back and like get back together with her, but her family still disapproved of the relationship enough that her father literally shot her lover. After this, Magnet or Agnes is believed to have a mental breakdown and then offed the rest of her family before offing herself, likely hanging herself at the tree at which she is seen and where like Arthur can find her. It's just one of the craziest stories is you literally can piece together this by just, you know, hearing her screams and whatnot and this is just like one of the craziest and creepiest stories that you can find in all of Red Dead Redemption. Missing Princess Isabeau. 
You can find her missing person poster outside of the Van Horn Saloon, and it says that she disappeared from her family while they were on a hunting trip in the United States in 1884. The disappearance shamed her family, which is the royal family of Luxembourg, and likely she either died by accident or by one of her family members as no ransom note was ever provided, but a lot of people think that she became, like got abducted and became a prostitute somewhere. I don't know. There's a ton of different theories about her, but I feel like the most likely thing is that she either, you know, ran away and then died that way, or she probably got killed by like one of her other family members, more likely like a uh, older brother that was doing some weird stuff to her and then had to kill her in that sense. Either way though, this is one of the craziest unsolved mysteries in all of Red Dead Redemption 2. And if there is more information on it, please let me know down in the comments below. The Dark Horse. The Dark Horse is a horse in Red Dead Redemption 1 that can only be found when the character has extremely low honor. It's a pretty average horse, but it actually doesn't lose any speed when going off trail. But a lot of people connected the Dark Horse from Red Dead Redemption 1 to Micah's horse, Baylock, in Red Dead Redemption 2 because they look extremely similar. And that could just be a little sneaky reference that Micah has no honor, but I feel like it's just like a total like Easter egg that Red that like Rockstar put in to, you know, reference back to Red Dead Redemption 1 and saying, yeah, Micah basically has no honor at all. And you got to put a bullet in this guy's head. Beecher's Hope Hidden Treasure. In Red Dead Redemption 1, there is a treasure map that points to a spot on John's property, which actually contains a gold bar from J.E.B. Pickett, a reference to two different confederal generals. And it's just kind of like interesting that there is like confederate gold buried on John's land as they do go searching for that a lot of time in Red Dead Redemption 2. But overall, it's not that interesting and there's not really that much of a mystery behind it. Someone just built something in the old Beecher's Hope fence. And I guess if it was like a Red Dead Redemption 1 mysteries thing, it is kind of an interesting mystery why there'd be gold here. But I don't know. It's not, it's not all that interesting to me. Hayden Russell. Hayden Russell is a stranger in Red Dead Redemption 2 that you can meet in Roanoke Ridge. Basically everything is in Roanoke Ridge is what I've learned from this iceberg, but he actually believes that the Civil War is still going on. He asks the player what side the player is on and will shoot if they antagonize him, saying that they're on the Union side. He basically just says that he's waiting on orders to march till Saint Denis, and when the player tries to tell him that it's been like fucking 40 years since the Civil War has ended, He's like, no, it hasn't. You're trying to trick me. And it's just, I don't know. It's such a funny thing. And clearly he has some kind of amnesia as he won't remember the player in their next encounters. And like, clearly, you know, he literally doesn't know the Civil War has ended by this point. But there's like four or five different encounters you can get with this guy and I'll have different little sayings each time. He's a really cool character and he just kind of throws in that little bit of just like rock star quirkiness. Guarma exclusive animals. There are 10 different Guarma exclusive animals with sharks, turtles, birds, and snakes all being exclusive ex exclusively to the island, but only this birds and snakes actually matter for filling up the compendium. So if you are trying for that, you must get them while on the island. And I know a lot of players will be like, oh my God, I forgot to go to it. And you literally can't go back to Guarma. So if you are trying to fill up the compendium, probably start a new save and go to Guarma and hunt all these animals because that's the only way you're going to be able to do it. Tiny Arm and the Banjo Mutant. Tiny Arm refers to a character in Lemoyne that you can find dead who has one normal arm and one tiny arm. This is just one of the weirdest things that you can find in the game because you can't actually do anything with him. You literally just are walking around and find this guy that's literally like a weird mutant that's dead and you can't see anything about it. And then the Banjo Mutant is a character that you can find in Butcher Creek who has this really weird deformed neck which is likely from iodine deficiencies. It's also based off of like a person from real life or like a photo from real life where it's the guy with a very similar iodine deficiency and he's playing a guitar. So that's kind of cool and kind of like a cool reference to real life but these are just two of like the weirdest characters that you can see and they're low-key kind of achy. Mystery Hill House. This is a house that you can find in Red Dead Redemption 2 in the Grizzlies East, which kind of looks like a Hobbit home. And I believe that's what it's actually based off of. It actually has a Chelonian symbol on top of the house and likely belongs to them in some way. And Arthur's grave is also found in the area. So you're, if you are gonna like find his grave, you're gonna have to pass through this house and see the house that way before like paying respects to him. It's kind of a cool house, but you can't actually go inside of it or really interact with it. And, some ways but there are a couple more mysteries about this house in the surrounding areas in a couple of the later entries 
the donkey lady. This is a POI in Red Dead Redemption 2 where the head of a donkey has been put on a woman in Chala Springs. Due to John and Arthur's reactions to it in their diaries, it seems like it actually was like a real character in the game. Like you like you can't interact with it, but I'm saying like it seems like it was actually a real person in like the game's lore, but it's based off of a glitch from Red Dead Redemption 1 where the head of a donkey we put on an NPC or you could just ride an NPC like a donkey, which is really funny. So I don't know. It's a cool little Easter egg though. The Carolina Parakeet. This animal is the only one in the entire game that can actually go extinct. If you hunt one animal, a note will come up saying that it's an endangered species. After 15 are hunted, the journal says the population is dwindling. After the final one is hunted, it will say that the parakeet is extinct and you won't be able to find them anymore. And this is actually based off of real life where the same like Carolina parakeet used to be a super popular thing all throughout the South of America and eventually literally got hunted to extinction around a similar time to when the game happens around like the uh, early 1900s so this is a very similar thing to real life and of course you don't really want to you know hunt it to extinction it feels bad in that way but this is something that you do need to like hunt for a couple of other things and it's like super hard to spawn in the game never actually have hunted it but is a really interesting thing that I feel like everyone has to check out and it is kind of like a little side mission side quest that you can do while playing the game out of Bounds, Mexico. This is just a reference to how you can clip Out of Bounds in Red Dead Redemption 2 and visit Mexico. Even though the landscape there is pretty bare bones, just include some of the more important landmarks like the fort on the border. Basically just the things that you're actually going to see from the Red Dead Redemption 2 map. They kind of kept that all in, but I believe this was kind of scrapped super early in development and they were going to have Mexico as a thing, but they're like, it's a lot of work. And especially when they weren't even potentially going to have like new Austin out at the time. That's why it's kind of very, very bare bones and why Arthur actually wasn't able to explore there. They kind of did the same thing with Mexico, but they just scrapped it earlier. And I know a lot of mods are actually trying to add it back. So if there is some mod that adds it back, that would be insanely cool. And I think they're still working in progress on that though, but that would be just sick and it'd make the game even better than it is now. I wish Rockstar would actually work with some of these mod people because that would be insane. Obscuridad del Santo Andreas. This is an item in Red Dead Redemption 1 that is received from a random encounter with a nun after the player reaches the highest honor level. It makes the player 25% less likely to, to be hit by a gunshot from the enemy. And just overall is a really cool item that you can get in Red Dead Redemption 1 and actually is kind of like a nice reward that you can get for being high honor because there's not really that much of like a difference between a high honor and low honor playthrough in Red Dead Redemption 1. The trail trees are a set of four trees in Roanoke Ridge that are all shaped weirdly in straight lines and they actually lead to a mine shaft where there is a treasure but I'm not really sure if there's that much else of a mystery and that much else of a reason for them to be in the game besides they kind of lead to a mine shaft where there is a treasure I don't even know if they're exactly correlated but they are kind of just a really really weird thing to stumble upon while you're playing Red Dead Redemption 2 because it's just like they're just weird trees and there's not really that much of a story behind them. The warp tree is a weird looking tree in the heartlands near the Larn Sod house. And if you actually do go and visit the warp tree, sometimes you'll, able, you'll be able to see the owner from the Larn Sod house, go out here and go to the grave that's right by it and always be mourning himself in front of in front of the grave there so that is kind of a weird thing but there's not really that much in terms of content with this it's just kind of like this weird mystery that this guy goes to the grave here and why he would plant like potentially his wife under this ugly ass tree man-made mutant this is one of the creepiest creatures in all of red dead redemption you can find it in a random house in roanoke ridge and it's likely a reference to south park's man bear pig because it has like a pig for the head i mean it is a little different but like it's likely a reference to that but it's a stitched up creature made of parts from a vulture, a pig, and other animals. And the music also just changes when you get into the room, which makes it just extra unsettling and creepy, especially if you do go into this house at night after seeing some other creepy stuff in Roanoke Ridge. Roanoke Ridge is just one of the weirdest places in all of Red Dead Redemption. And this makes it even creepier because you can't go in any other parts of the house. It's only this place. And I'm pretty sure they were supposed to make it like a thing that could get up and start walking, but it, I'm assuming it's just like some simple cut content and they didn't want to actually add that to the game. 
Blackwater Athletics team. This is another creepy mass grave that you can find in tall trees where you can see like 15 members of the Blackwater Athletics team all dead with like clown masks on. Just overall extremely creepy and unsettling and one of the weirdest things to randomly stumble upon while playing the game, especially if you're playing at night. This would creep me out. They were likely killed by Edmund Lowry Jr. just because he has like a bee made out of arms, just like there is one at the scene of the crime that's also like a similar bee. But the one thing I wonder is how the hell did he overpower that many different people, especially when they're all these athletic people. Like the thing in the paper says missing team and they seem to all be like out on a run, I believe. So I don't understand how he could overpower every single one of them, especially when they all had been working out like that. So just overall crazy story. Frozen Settler. The Frozen Settler is a character that you can find frozen to death on the top of Mount Hagen. He's decked out in full like conquistador attire. So it's extremely weird how first he got up this high and second off, his body is still like in a fine state you know, this long after he's been there, or like not even his body, because of course his body's gonna be frozen, kept in a better state, but like his helmet and whatnot, like this is a guy from like the 1500s and the helmet is fine and Arthur can put it on and use it. I don't know, it's a crazy thing, but I'm just wondering how this guy got up there, why he's on the top of Mount Hagen and why he froze to death there, because what is a conquistador doing on top of a cold ass mountain? Pagan Ritual Site. This is another one of the creepiest spots in Red Dead Redemption 2 where you can find a ritual where there is a human body with no lower half or head, which the head was replaced by an animal skull. This is likely where a witch performed a sacrifice and the symbols are similar to what the night folk use. So there could be some connection there, but since this location is just so far from where the night folk are in Lemoyne, since it is in West Elizabeth in like the very, very Western part of it, I don't think there's that connection, but it could just be like a pagan ritual religion type sacrifice, which, you know, would definitely correspond to this and correspond to the night folk because they're both like weird and creepy and like probably pagan ritual people so i don't know the night folk do some crazy stuff this is also some crazy stuff but this is probably more of like a witch than the night folk micah wasn't the only rat there is a widely spread theory around the red dead redemption 2 community that micah wasn't the only rat and that someone like abigail or john could have tipped the pinkertons off before guarma due to pinkerton present at the bank robbery and the fact that john was the only one who's actually like captured by the pinkertons and like the government and the abigail got away scot-free while hosea got captured by them but i think this is pretty easy to write off due to the fact that hosea probably got out or like got caught because he tried to help abigail get out and john probably got caught because he was like one of the last ones fighting his way out and the reason he didn't die is because they're probably not gonna you know be shooting out stuff if the guy is surrendering i don't know i don't really think this theory is that good because I feel like Rockstar would have laid it out in a much less obscure way if there really was a second rat. Like, they wouldn't be like, there, there's a bunch of clues here, but you're going to have to figure it out on your, their own. I feel like they would have said something and, you know, maybe there would have been like a note from Abigail or John that, you know, would have explained it a little bit better. But I really don't think there was a second rat. And I think Micah was definitely the only one. Vetter's Echo Bear. Vetter's Echo is a cabin in Big Valley where when entering, a bear will attack the player since it got trapped in the cabin somehow. Or maybe not trapped in the cabin because there is a door or like the way it got in, but you can find a man there who the bear killed after you kill the bear and then a typewriter. And some people suggest that Dutch lived here since there's a poem written to Abigail. But why would the next person who lived in the house who got killed by the bear keep Dutch's stuff after Dutch left the cabin. That doesn't really make sense to me, so I very much doubt that Dutch lived here. And, you know, Anna, Annabelle's a pretty, like, common name. It's not like they're named, I don't know, something, like, less common. So it could just be anyone living there, and Annabelle's, like, a very, very, you know, young woman name. So I think it was very much not Dutch. Its art is a secret achievement in Red Dead Redemption 2, which has to be completing after finishing Elle Hobbs's the taxidermist animal request where you shoot the animals and you send it off to her. She'll give you a squirrel statue which John will place above the fireplace and then it'll soon leave and then John has to find it five different times. The last which is on top of a mountain which will finally grant you the achievement and basically the full completion of the game because it's like one of the hardest achievements to get. So I don't know it's a really cool achievement but 
it's kind of just like such a tedious one and one that I myself would probably never get unless I had to get every single achievement. Elysian Pool Cave Paintings. After finding all 20 dream catchers in Red Dead Redemption 2, which I believe is another achievement you have to do, the journal will point you to Elysian Pool where you can find cave paintings that depict bison, similar to the original like French cave paintings. I believe the ones that are like considered the oldest ones in the world where in like France they found a bunch of cave paintings and they depict bison. This is pretty similar to that. And there's also like an ancient arrowhead that you can find as your treasure. It's all connected to a different like uh, achievement or like treasure map that you can do, but that, I don't know. It's, it's just kind of cool paintings. Reed Cottage Treasure. Reed Cottage is a cabin located in Roanoke Ridge where there's a treasure map that will then lead you to a tree near the Elysian Pool, which was in the last one, where you can actually find a gold bar. There's not really much else to it, but there's like a tree that's marked with an X location and you can see it and you can find it and that's where the actual treasure is basically if you walk 20 steps north of that. The Triple K sightings can be found multiple times in Red Dead Redemption 2. I think there's like three places. They're mostly in the south but there's some in I believe New Hanover but they're mostly concentrated in Lemoyne. You can find them multiple times burning crosses and complain about their membership as no one wants to join their group. There's actually a letter that you can read that talks about the like super racist guy that you can find in Saint Denis. They're like we should we should learn up about this guy but you can also just see them like you know burning themselves while burning the cross and one time a cross falls on them as a triple k member as he's like about to put it up and just really funny and basically the game shows them as a bunch of bumbling idiots like they are in real life and just you know depicts them in a very unflattering way which i mean should be the way it is because there's no reason to ever idolize the triple k or even think of them as like good people they're clearly bad people is what i'm saying and they clearly deserve to be dealt with with some dynamite, some fire, just any way to, you know, give these guys a little bit of the Arthur Morgan ass whooping is something you need to do every single time when playing Red Dead Redemption and seeing the Triple K out in the wild. Tier four is the mysteries that a lot of people know about, but they're more like these Reddit mysteries that you have to piece together a ton of different clues to find out what the actual story is. Kieran's death in the San Denis Seal. Kieran Duffy died during the San Denis chapter while the gang was holed up in Shady Bell near San Denis and his head was cut off and he was forced to hold it. Remember this because the city seal of San Denis is Lady Justice holding the scales of justice in one hand and her head in the other. Very similar and probably just a rock star Easter egg, but it is very like interesting to think about and think about that like I'm assuming the O'Driscolls did this on purpose to show. I don't know, that he got his justice for betraying the gang or whatnot, or just the fact that it connected back to San Denis in that way. I think it's a really interesting, yeah, Easter egg from Rockstar, because I don't really think it means that much, but it is just a weird thing to look at, and the fact that there is such good similarities between the two of them. Zebra Donkey. The Zebra Donkey is the best mount in Red Dead Redemption 1's multiplayer, and it can be unlocked after the player reaches the legend rank four times and level 55 times, which is kind of crazy. This is also a reference back, or like Red Dead Redemption has a reference to this when you find the donkey painted like a zebra in the mission with um, the, the man who thinks he's a woman and he runs like a, a show or whatever. That That's a little reference back to it, but I don't know, It's it's interesting. Newspaper in Sonny's Shack. In Sonny's Shack, the guy who will SA the player's character. You know, if you know, you know. There is a newspaper clipping where it says, First Brigade Colonel aids chopper casualties, a reference to how Moore's life in the Vietnam War. Some people think that it was maybe something from Francis Sinclair, the time traveler, because, you know, of course the Vietnam War hasn't happened by the time of Red Dead Redemption 2, but it also could just be a reuse of textures where you know rockstar was using it in a different game or they had some texture like this and they just want to put it in there but the fact that rockstar is such a like they focus on so many small details i feel like this cannot be just a reuse of textures because they would not really want you to see it especially in a weird way like there's a lot of very interesting sunny newspapers that are like newspapers that this guy has from all around the world from yeah like england from vietnam it's just a crazy weird thing that he has all these from around the world and i just don't think it's a reuse of textures don't really know why sunny has them but it is kind of interesting to think about 
Henny's Bethel and UFO sightings. Henny's Bethel is a homestead you can find in the Heartlands where if you go inside, you can see a cult that all off themselves together. They have a sermon that you can read and the first line says, second hour under the half moon. And if you come back at 2 a.m. back to Henny's Bethel, you can see a UFO fly over the cabin. There also is another UFO at Mount Sean if you're also there at 2 a.m., but this one definitely is a reference to the UFO cult, like no shit. But it is just kind of interesting that you can find all these little Easter eggs around the Red Dead Redemption 2 map and that there is this UFO. And a lot of people think there is some reference to GTA 5 here because they do have UFOs there. And there's like this Mount Sean mystery and Mount Chiliad mystery in GTA 5. They think there's some connection there. I don't really see it that much. I think it's just some overlapping themes between the two games. But, you know, there could be more to see there. Silent Stead. This is an abandoned homestead in both Red Dead Redemption 1 and Red Dead Redemption 2, but in RDR 1, sometimes smoke will come out of the chimney. Some Red Dead Redemption 2 players also don't think it's deserted because there's a horse that sometimes will spawn there, but I think these are honestly just glitches or messes up by Rockstar in this sense because I feel like these are a lot more like simple mess ups and there's not really much going on with Silent Stead. Miriam Wegner. Miriam Wegner is a girl that will peer outside of the Emerald Ranch or outside of Emerald Ranch through a window in one of the houses there around midnight and noon. Supposedly she is locked up in there as you can't find her anywhere outside. And if you do find an abandoned post wagon in the Cumberland Forest, you can find out that she actually fell in love with a local farm boy who was killed in an accidental shooting probably by one of her family members as it said her father also exerts a ton of control over her and you know supposedly probably is the one who is locking up in her house in this way and after the shooting she was never been seen outside the house likely because her father or whoever it was that killed the boy also didn't want her doing that again you know falling in love with a local farm boy so they locked her up instead, which is just a crazy thing to think about. This is just not something you do to one of your family members. I believe there is more about this mystery, but it got cut in some cut content. Nude painting in Armadillo Saloon. In Red Dead Redemption 1, you can find a nude painting behind the bar of the saloon. This is also in Red Dead Redemption 2, of course, but this is a colored version of the painting from 310 to Yuma, the movie. And it also appeared in Gun, which was a similar game to Red Dead Redemption 1, but released before and was also in that game behind the bar of their saloon. So it just is like kind of a classic, like, I don't know, Western theme game and something that's in all of them. Coots Chapel Gravestones. Coots Chapel is one of the main chapels featured in Red Dead Redemption 1 and Red Dead Redemption 2. In the chapel, you can find the graves of many of Bonnie McFarlane's brothers, and you can also find the grave of Marshall Johnson's wife, Priscilla. It's kind of interesting that you can see all these graves. You can also go to like the Blackstone one and find Dutch's mom. It's kind of interesting to just read over all the graves and see how they relate to the people in the game. The Sun Worshipper. In New Austin, in Red Dead Redemption 2, you can find a character basking in the sun and you can see him like I think 16 different times and there's a new encounter every single different time. This guy's always going up to the sun. He's like, oh my God, the sun's amazing. I think he thinks the sun is a God. I mean, he does think the sun is a God, Helios, and it kind of brings life to everything. Supposedly, he hasn't eaten anything or drank anything or shaved his beard or basically done anything because he gets all his energy from the sun and he doesn't need anything else to survive him. I don't know, it's kind of crazy in, in my own personal opinion, and it's just like one of those funny, quirky characters that Rockstar throws in all their games. Dead Missionaries. The Jesuit Missionary is a POI in Red Dead Redemption 2 where you can find a dead missionary. If you read the note on his body, you can see that he left his former Spanish mission in California to spread the gospel throughout the East. But he died before, I mean, he could do anything. You see his body, you can read his journal, and it didn't seem like he was out there spreading the gospel. But it also says that the leaders at his mission said that he probably wouldn't survive and that he had grown disillusioned with their teachings there and that he thought he could spread it better, you know, in, in the Westland, in New Austin. But clearly it didn't work, and rest in peace to Brown. Robert Elliott Patchen's note. 
You can find a note where Robert Elliott Patchen, a former famous stage actor in big cities like Chicago and Saint Denis, had seemingly grown disillusioned with his life, saying that he never got the same, you know, reception that a lot of these other people did, and wanted to off himself. He says that the substances he abuses are the only way he stays happy. He doesn't have anything else to live for. So, you know, based on the fact that you can find his hat there and the note there, you can see that he probably offed himself or somehow faked his death because you can't actually find his corpse at Granite Pass below the waterfall that you can actually find the note at or anywhere in the game. So, you know, maybe he just faked his death, but either way, rest in peace, bro, as well. The Butcher Creek Pentagon. When going to Butcher Creek, if you go to each of the outhouses, they're num numbered one through five. And following them and flicking a switch, I believe, in that order will reveal a pentagram beneath one of the houses in Butcher Creek. Also, if you go to the burned down house, sometimes a pentagram will also be beneath it, revealing that Butcher Creek may actually be cursed in some way. And it's not just these capitalist scum that are ruining Butcher Creek. There may be an actual curse there. And I think, honestly, Butcher Creek is it's got some weird people. It's got the Banjo Mutant. It's got a bunch of crazy people. So there definitely is a little bit more of a curse. And, you know, besides them just being some run-down, run-of-the-neck hillbillies, there definitely is something weird going on in Butcher Creek. Hermit Woman and the Witch's Cauldron. If you explore the north part of West Elizabeth, you can find a witch or a hermit woman who will force Arthur off her property or she will try to stick her dogs on them. If Arthur kills her, he will write in his journal that she was a witch. You can also find the other half to the Otis Miller's treasure here, so that's why she's called the Hermit Woman supposedly, but there's also a witch's cauldron in an area in Amberino where players can find a giant cauldron still bubbling with a taxidermied raven there, suggesting that a witch recently used it. Some people believe these are connected, but I don't really understand why a witch would have her cauldron super far away from like her actual house like these two are. These are like a whole state over. I don't understand why that would happen, but this woman is still extremely weird. Like she can force her dogs to attack John. And just overall, I don't understand why there's a random witch's cauldron in the middle of Amory know with no one using it or no supposed explanation to it so overall it's just super super creepy and not something you want to stumble on in the middle of the night because you might think you're getting cursed by someone in red dead redemption 2 older jack's voice this refers to a so-called glitch that you could get in red dead redemption 2 where older jack voice would play instead of john's i have no idea if this is actually real but it's an interesting story nonetheless and here it is morning partner another day the Wandering Mad Preacher. This is a character that you can find basically all around Red Dead Redemption 2, normally preaching in or at least near creeks. I think he's always in the creek, but if you continue to encounter him, he will say that he's looking for a blessing and that God hasn't given him one. But if you also encounter him as John, he will say that he's basically still looking, but he's almost lost his faith by then, which I mean, bro, if you're doing this for seven different years and you haven't found something by then, yeah, I mean, you kind of should have lost your faith by that point. Alma Horlick. Alma Horlick is an old woman in a stranger encounter in Red Dead Redemption 1 who says that she's waiting for her husband to show up for her. After going through the mission, you realize that her husband died 20 years prior, and she's actually just a crazy old woman. Some people think she's a ghost, but I mean, you can like actually encounter her in the game, and I don't really see any reason why John or Jack would you know hallucinate up a ghost or see a ghost in any case so i really don't think this is the case and i think it's more likely that she's just a crazy old schizophrenic woman canis kenham edit on calloway's revolver calloway's revolver has canis kenham edit inscribed on it which is likely a reference to rockstar's game bully i mean it probably is a reference to rockstar's game bully which was called canis kenham edit in europe but is also just a reference to doggy dog because that's what it means in latin like that's what canis kenham edit means in latin so i mean i don't i don't really know but it's probably just a thing that calloway had on his rifle to show that you know dog eat dog and he was like this crazy gunslinger in red dead redemption 2. molly o'shea's grave molly o'shea doesn't actually have a grave in red dead redemption 2 because 
since she ratted on the gang, her body was instead burned instead of being buried. But there was a grave planned for her in the early stages of the game. And you can actually still spawn it in or like restore it. And it's just way under the ground now. But it is kind of interesting to think about that they were going to have Molly have a grave. But they don't anymore because, you know, they, she kind of didn't deserve it because she ratted on the gang in her own way. But I don't know. I think it's kind of interesting either way. General Harris and the Bulger Glade Ghost. General Harris was a general in the Civil War in the Red Dead Redemption universe, and he actually repelled the Union forces in the Battle of Scarlet Meadows, which you can go to the battlefield, which is right beside Rhodes. And if you actually go to the battlefield, you can hear ghostly sounds that talk about General Harris. I'll play them now. The Fort Riggs Veteran Story. There's a random encounter where you can find a war veteran who is actually stationed at Fort Riggs, which is an abandoned fort in Big Valley. If you give him a drink of whiskey, he will tell you about how the army massacred Native Americans at Fort Riggs and that he still feels bad to this day. He will die eventually due to you giving him alcohol. When this guy's clearly an alcoholic and probably hadn't eaten anything at all, and you can actually loot him to get a Native American ring. This is one of the craziest things. It's just like, not creepy, but it's just like, you get so much lore from just this random character who tells you about it. And it's only if you do the bad thing and give this alcoholic another drink, which I don't know, it's just crazy. And it's crazy just how like poorly Native Americans were treated in this game and in real life because, you know, it's kind of, of course representative of real life and this was something that happened in real life as well and just the massacre and stuff that happens is just so sad to hear mr gillis's death some people believe that you can find mary gillis's father's body in new austin in 1907 because you can see a man that i would say vaguely looks like him and someone that is like bloody and beaten and you know mr gillis is probably not the greatest guy beforehand and probably was doing some bad things so he's like could be a guy that's bloody and beaten here but i just don't think this is him because this is such a weird reference to a character that like vaguely looks like him but i feel like there at least be a little bit more detail in my opinion if this was an actual rock star like confirmed thing the panoramic map and the Mount Sean Sundial. There's a random encounter where you can find a corpse who has a panoramic map according to, you know, what it says on the description. And this map, well, it doesn't lead you, but if you go to Mount Sean and align it right, the map's points will line up with all the major settlements in the game. Mount Sean also has a sundial on the mountain, which has red arrows that will point to a couple unique items, but I'm not really sure if these are connected, but a lot of people think these actually have something to do with the Mount Chiliad mystery from GTA 5. And, you know, I think they could, but I just don't really think this panoramic map has that much of, like, it doesn't have that much interest in it, or like, I don't have that much interest in it, because it just points to all the major settlements. I don't think there's that much more of a big discussion about it there's not really that much of a mystery going on in my opinion maybe there still is a mystery that we have to find out just like the mount chiliad mystery in gta 5 but i just don't think there's that much more going on chala springs exploding house there is a house in chala springs that will automatically explode when you get near it many people thought this was a pretty big mystery and i still think it is in a way but if you do go to the house you can realize that it was pretty likely a moonshine distillery and that's why it exploded just because there's a lot of alcohol content in the air when I mean, you do have fire and alcohol that probably isn't the greatest things to have together because there's going to be things like explosions and i feel like that's probably the most likely you know theory of what happened here the Manzanita Post Secrets. This is one of the craziest mysteries in all of Red Dead Redemption 2, but if you do visit Tall Trees in Red Dead Redemption 2, you can kill two men and loot their bodies to find a Norwegian news scrap where you can read that a family was killed by their religious family members in Norway 
likely for marrying outside their race because on the back of the new scrap, it says, I believe, urine, U-R-E-N, which means unclean in Norwegian, which is just a crazy thing to write on the back of a newspaper scrap. But if you search the chimney in Manzanita Post, you can find a journal entry, which describes a man feeling regrets over a likely murder. With this, you can also find the photo of the family, which was believed to have been killed, along again with the Norwegian word for unclean, which was also on the news scrap. So, you know, both of them had this Norwegian word for unclean. Supposedly, if you do read over the journal entry, which is all in Norwegian, it says that they were likely part of some like religious cult or religious, like super religious conservative thing in Norway. And she married out of her race by marrying someone from North Africa, which I wouldn't even say is like that far outside of your race. Like it's also someone that's from, I guess, the Mediterranean area or like European adjacent, which is kind of crazy. But after this event, everyone in their small religious community specifically and mysteriously disappeared. Every single person who had lived a secluded life before, they had all left and likely some of them had relocated to Manzanita Post because you can find this Norwegian scrap here and you can find a lot of these other Norwegian scraps here. So I'm assuming a lot of this Norwegian group had moved to Manzanita Post where they then started their life with Nils or whatever, that guy. And there's some just crazy people. They did some crazy shit and they murdered someone for marrying outside of their race, which is just so stupid. Tier five, these are mysteries that either few players in the game have seen or few players in the game really understand the theory black sheep with a ribbon. If you go to around Emerald Ranch, you can find a homestead with three little huts. And if you visit one of the huts, you can find a dead sheep and a man with his pants down. Likely this guy was doing some absolutely crazy things to the sheep besides like maybe marrying it due to the ring. And somehow he died in some way while doing some weird stuff to the sheep. But you can also find another sheep walking across the Red Dead Redemption 2 map. And it's basically the same thing. I don't know if you can find both sheep at the same time, but you can find another sheep that is like the exact same thing, a black sheep with a little ring on top of it, which is also pretty interesting. Judge Holden. On the front of door of Jeremiah Compson, who was known as an enslaved persons catcher, and actually got his house repossessed by the, um, the, the bank, you can see the repossession notice is from a bank signed by Judge Holden. Judge Holden actually is a character from Cormac McCarthy's novel Blood Meridian, which is kind of like an anti-Western, basically the opposite of what Red Dead Redemption 2 is. Ghost Trains. In Red Dead Redemption 2, the ghost train is a super weird and random encounter that you can trigger by, like, if you're riding by the train tracks in Lemoyne, you can somehow just see a train, but it's like you can walk through it and whatnot. It's basically like a spectral train riding on the tracks. I don't really know what this is necessarily a reference to, but it's one of the coolest things to see in Red Dead Redemption 2, but it's also just super, super hard to trigger because I think the, the rates of it are just super, super low, and it's just like one of the hardest things to see in all of Red Dead Redemption 2, but when you do see it, it's one of the most amazing experiences ever loading screen coordinates on the loading screen photos for red Dead redemption 2 they sneak in some coordinates using letters and numbers that correspond to a latitude longitude le map lining up with the photo they're taking in it doesn't seem like the coordinates really mean anything more than the positions on the map that the photos were taken and while they were hyped up to be this like super huge mystery it just seems like something that rockstar was using in their beta files and stuff like this make sure where they are on the map or the person who was like making the photos just put the coordinates there because you know it it makes sense for them but i don't really think there's any mystery to do with these and it just seems like they line up with certain coordinates circus wagon and stuffed gorilla the circus wreck is a wrecked wagon in west elizabeth with the remnants of a former circus wagon containing the remains of a conjoined twins and a fortune teller Madam Irene will give the player a fortune and basically like will say, oh, your beard's looking good today or like you're looking fat, you're looking skinny or you have good honor or whatever. It basically says stuff that like it'll read your player data and it'll like spit out a fortune based on that. So it's, I don't know, it's kind of interesting, kind of scary and kind of creepy, especially if you are like going there at night, but it's not as good as like the, the soothsayer or the fortune teller guy, like in terms of fortunes. But 
The stuffed gorilla is kind of a similar wreck in Big Valley where you can find a destroyed crate with the stuffed gorilla which likely came from the taxidermist house because that's pretty close to there and was just a botched delivery just due to it being in the vicinity and also literally being a stuffed gorilla. So, I mean, it was probably from a taxidermist house and just overall, that kind of makes sense. The rock drawings. The rock drawings are what you have to find for Francis Sinclair in the Stranger Mission, Geology for Beginners. And when Sinclair time travels back to wherever he was before, you can find a mural in his house and then you can match kind of all the rock carvings to his mural and you see how like I guess he went all around space and time or whatever his weird role is in Red Dead Redemption 2 and GTA 5 and like the Epsilon program you can kind of you know match it all up I guess but I'm assuming this means that Sinclair like had to use the carvings in a way to get back to his time period or either access certain time periods because the carvings like do represent different like time periods or different you know, moments in history. Blackwater Aztec Code. The Blackwater Aztec Code is a set of symbols you can find in a back alleyway in Blackwater, where when you decode the si symbols using a cipher, I believe you can turn it into Blessed Are the Peacemakers, Iwatetal, which that's the Aztec God that's in Undead Nightmare and actually like is the bad guy causing all the Undead Nightmare curses. But you can also like, see it as a hint to like an undead nightmare 2 content or red dead online content or just kind of an easter egg for red dead redemption 1 but i believe blessed are the peacemakers is also a you know a mission in red dead redemption 2 but it's also what is written on john's grave in red dead redemption 1 so there's kind of just like a bunch of different you know i guess easter eggs there but it's not really that much of a mystery because i'm pretty sure it's just an easter egg to red dead redemption 1 repentance rock mystery site Near Repentance Rock in Red Dead Redemption 1, there is a deer pelt with cryptic markings in runestones that face north, east, and west. Also, there is a plate of carvings of a sun, a large man, a devil man, a spear, and a buffalo. This is likely just some religious site, as it seems that the symbols are from a pagan religion, and people around New Austin say that miracles happen at Repentance Rock, so there could be some way of, like, the the people here performing miracles but it's likely just they're performing some kind of ritual and people think that miracles happen at repentance rock because people go to repentance rock and they come back a little better so i don't know it's kind of an interesting site but there's not really that much information about it you can really like deduct what the actual mystery is here Mercer Station Wagon Circle. By Mercer Station in Red Dead Redemption 2, there's a circle of wagons which look like they just have fought off an attack from shoot someone shooting them with arrows. Likely this is just a Native American attack on someone invading their land and doesn't really mean much to the actual game. There's not really much of a mystery here, it's just kind of a little like, I don't know, point of interest that you can see where there was likely a Native American tag. And this potentially is a reference to the movie Red River where they also had like a Native American attack and they had like a little wagon circle there. But I think this is a pretty common thing where you circle around in wagons when you're getting attacked by Native Americans. Phonograph Shack. In a ran down houseboat in Blue Water Marsh, Arthur can find a phonograph and phonographs are pretty popular during these years. But to find one in a random houseboat instead of a Sandini household is kind of a surprise because they're also like reasonably pretty expensive and like someone living in a houseboat having like a nice thing like a phonograph is just a pretty weird thing to happen. Boat in a tree. Right by Sandini there is a boat seemingly stuck in a tree like it's just up there in the tree and I don't really understand how it got up there in the tree potentially could be like a hurricane or something like that but there literally is nothing interesting in the boat but it seems like it's a reference to Aguirre Wrath of God where there's also a boat stuck in a tree I don't know it's kind of interesting but the fact that rocks are like put a boat in a tree and didn't put anything in there and didn't like make it that much more interesting is kind of a disappointment in my opinion bobcats in red dead redemption 2 bobcats were an animal that were in red dead redemption 1 and they were actually taken out in red dead redemption 2 even in areas that were in both games in red dead redemption 1 they were able to be seen in west elizabeth in tall trees and in mexico but they can't be found in tall trees in red dead redemption 2 likely just because rockstar was too lazy to add in 
to code, a new animal only able to be found in one location in tall trees. And they don't really think the fans would care about the continuity, but a lot of people will still be looking for the Bobcats to this day, thinking that Rockstar somehow added them into Red Dead Redemption 2, but there's basically no way that happened. Micah tried to hurt Jack. Some people believe that Micah either touched Jack in inappropriate ways or did other things to Jack, especially because he pretty likely killed Jack's dog or, you know, made him go away because Jack's dog doesn't appear in chapter six. And after they found him in like chapter three and four, he doesn't come back. But he also went on fishing trips with Jack pretty often. But to me, I feel like this is more him trying to make John mad as a father rather than Micah actually being weird with that kid, like, like with kids. And he very much does not seem like that kind of character, like an SA type character and more of someone that just tries to get other people mad at them and like piss other people off. Just, just like an asshole character. He doesn't seem like a actual like weird in that way besides, you know, doing weird stuff to women is what I'm saying. I don't think he's doing stuff to kids. And Jack very much seems like a normal kid throughout the entire game. Some people say he's a little bit weirder after he goes to like Angela Bronte stuff and whatever, but I don't really think Jack changed that much throughout the entire game. Maybe I just haven't been paying attention to this little kid, but I don't think he changed that much. And I don't think Micah did anything weird to him because that would just be such a bad thing and probably would like get him kicked out of the gang. And I don't think that was his plan. Cut Dwarf and Giant Mission in Red Dead Redemption 1. In Red Dead Redemption 1, there was a Cut Stranger mission where you meet a dwarf and you make him become friends with the giant because no one else will be his friend. I'll play an audio from it right now. What's, what's your problem, friend? How can you ask me a question like that? Look at me! Just look at me! Even the whores turn me down laughing and you're asking me such a question. I've seen people have it worse. I ain't. So you're the worst creature in all of creation? Must be nice to be so special. Damn you. Damn all of them. Calm down with your damn nations, friend. I ain't got no friends. All right, then. I'll find you one. John basically finds the dwarf a friend, and then he finds a giant for him to be friends, because the giant also doesn't have any friends. And then I believe one of them kills the other one. I don't really remember which one it was, but it's, you know, kind of dark and twisted, like a lot of the other Red Dead Redemption 1 missions. And it really was just likely cut due to development time. But they did kind of fit it in with the the Bertram mission in Red Dead Redemption 2 and they kind of brought back that dwarf and giant like friend stereotype thing but they do also have like other people in their like little circus freak show if you want to call it that. The missing Lloyd Duffy. Lloyd Duffy is a character in Red Dead Redemption 1 who can be found as a random encounter in both the base game and Undead Nightmare and will have a conversation with John in Undead Nightmare revealing that he had to put his entire family down because they were trying to eat him. This is referring to the fact, like the missing Lloyd Duffy, that he was supposed to be classified as a missing person mission in Undead Nightmare, but he couldn't be because no one would be able to report him since his family is dead the entire time. So they're going to have him be a little mission where you can go and find him, but they realize it doesn't really make sense and they just relegated him to a missing person or like a person that you can find on the road which is kind of interesting but it isn't really that much of a mystery guarma relics this refers to many guarma relics if i mean that's what they're called in the files but that were found in the game files that have been cut from the game again this is probably just doing not to have much time for rockstar to develop guarma like guarma is very under underdeveloped in red dead redemption and there's so much stuff cut out from there and they thought that was probably the best place to cut stuff out from because it's not really that big of a part of the actual game now and that's why it is such an underdeveloped place and that's why you can't go back to it either secret was message by fort riggs there is a note that's called english spelling practice but if you look at the first letters of each of the word each of the words in the actual spelling practice, it spells out, Wazia comes with winter breath. His trees stand guard whispering all night that we sleep in our grave. Father fought and died so quickly. Mother dies slow. Wazia is the Lakota name for an ice giant where the winter winds come from. So likely this is just a simple message 
similar to a diary or a poem that talks about the death of his family members due to the cold and likely harsh treatment they had at Fort Riggs because I'm pretty sure they, they had a lot of people that, that were actually interned at Fort Riggs, like all the Native Americans were interned there, similar to like what happened with the Japanese and they kind of were just put there in really bad conditions and i'm assuming because it was also cold there these are probably some reasonably older parents they did die due to the cold as well the fertility statues the male and female fertility statues are two unique items that can be found in red dead redemption 2 the female statue can be found at the roadside brothel in roanoke ridge under the owner's chair and the male statue can be found in old bacchus's place in hennigan which will also spawn a ton of rats these are both related to fertility in a way since the rats reproduce extremely quickly and the brothel is a place for men to get off their nut so i don't know it's kind of interesting and kind of like a little easter egg but they don't really do anything Dorman Crest Body. Dorman Crest is a home in the Grizzlies West region where the player can use Eagle Eye to follow a trail away from the house to find a frozen man holding a carbine repeater. It seems like he was trying to leave the house because he somehow couldn't survive there due to just the cold game being in there or he had to like find food or something and instead froze outside. This is a reference to the Jeremiah Johnson movie where basically the exact same thing happens and they find a frozen man holding a carbine repeater. So I don't know, kind of interesting, but it's just kind of a cool Easter egg. Joe and Osmond Grove. Osmond Grove is a homestead in Roanoke Ridge where if you go and you play it in the base game, you can find the corpses of a family who died likely due to carbon monoxide poisoning because their door is like barricaded in shut and they it seems like the stove or something was on and they died that how that way but this is also weird because joe the person that you meet and is like one of micah's friends from red dead redemption 2 lives here in red dead online which may mean that he had a connection to them and their death because he just does seem like a pretty sadistic person but i don't really know how likely this is and it could just be a rock star like not coding issue but they don't have enough place on the map to put all these like stranger characters so they just threw them in here and you know expected the players not to really care that much the shrunken head the shrunken head is an item that can be found in a clay jar that you have to shoot open in le Kay. and since it is found in le Kay, it was probably used in some sort of like voodoo thing since the people from le Kay were definitely known as like witches and people who practice voodoo and they're just like in the swamp it's kind of like the classic thing there but i don't know it's not really that interesting you can actually sell them to a fence or whatnot for like a solid amount of money but it doesn't really do anything in the actual game elijah's letter and the remnants of the slave trade elijah is a dead body that you can find in red dead redemption 2 and you can find an M letter to his uncle lewis this letter is from 1861 and says that he escaped from the pennington family but got cat caught by a catcher of enslaved people and was brought to old harry fenn where he also eventually escaped from i'm assuming he got caught by one of the same people who caught him before and was likely just unalived because they thought he was too much trouble because he did escape from both places before and potentially he could have been caught by jeremiah compson who was a former enslaved persons catcher or one of the bounties in red dead redemption 2 you have to go to old harry fenn you can catch the guy there and i believe he was also a former enslaved persons catcher but it could be either of those two or it could just be a random dude who caught him i don't know there's not really much information that points one way or the other Cut wanted posters. This refers to the wanted posters that were going to be in the game, showing the bounty of your character. Like if you're playing as John, there's gonna be a John one, or you're playing as Arthur, there's gonna be an Arthur one, and kind of like a couple other details about them. They kind of change based on how much bounty you have and based on the last known alias of your character. So if Arthur was Tacitus Callahan, it'll say it on the actual poster saying, oh, Tacitus Callahan was what he's last known as. And I don't really understand why Rockstar cut these unless they were actually too hard to like put in the game and they just would have glitched out because there is assets for literally every single bounty level. And like you can see exactly like how they change based on everything. And I, I don't like, it's basically fully in the game except for the actual posters being in the game. So I don't really understand why they were cut, but I don't know. It kind of is a really cool and interesting detail. And like one of the more interesting things that you can see, you can also find them on bounty hunters who actually are trying to like capture Arthur Morgan because you can, you know, of course the bounty hunters are going to see the bounty and then, you know, move out from there. 
Braithwaite and Gray love letter. There's a letter from 1806 you can find in the swamps of Lemoyne that is written by a Braithwaite to a Gray, telling him about the Braithwaite gold and telling him to use it to lobby Congress members to stop the importation of enslaved people from Africa because she didn't want their families wrapped up in with it. This is just a crazy thing, and it's very similar to the whole Penelope and Bo storyline, and it seems like they weren't the first Braithwaite and Grays to fall in love with each other and kind of try to stop their whole family feud, but clearly it kept going on, and clearly this probably even made it even worse because he stole the gold, and this was like one of the big things they blamed each other about, but... It is Lucille asked the Grey to go run away with her in Europe as she's already in exile in Connecticut. And yeah, it's kind of where the whole Braithwaite gold story came from and kind of probably sparked some tensions in Red Dead Redemption 2 actually as well. Joe Yi and Joe Ming. Joe Yi is a corpse you can find in a campsite in Chola Springs where you can read him an uncle from Yi's uncle, thanking him for trying to find his cousin Joe Ming in America and trying to convince him to come home after Joe Ming's wife convinced him to come to America. That snake woman is kind of what the uncle says in the letter, but Joe Ming could be a reference to the character Joe from Red Dead Redemption 1 who's involved in a stranger mission in Mexico after being locked in the slaughterhouse and it could be a little reference there or it could just be a pretty common like name to have last name to have so I don't know it could be a bunch of different things but Joe Yi never really made it there because he did eventually die clearly because he couldn't survive it out there hopefully Joe Ming had a little bit better of a life even with his you know terrible wife supposedly is what the uncle says but I think it could go either way the Neanderthal the Neanderthal is supposedly a cut character in Red Dead Redemption 2 that is supposedly stuck in the ice. I know a lot of people have posted like fake videos about him actually being stuck in the ice and I'm pretty sure he's not even in the game. Like you can find his file in the, the, the files but you can't actually like put him in the game and like some people mod him in and make him stuck in the ice but there's been so much misinformation that I don't really know what's right at this point, but I believe he might have been supposed to be stuck in the ice somewhere on the map, but they took him out before the game is, so you can't find him now, and like he's just somewhere in the actual files, but you, you can't really do anything with that, and tons of people have made videos now like pretending that they've solved the mystery, but I don't really think it's a mystery, I think it's just something cut from the game, and there's not really any mystery to solve here. El Hueco Cave. El Hueco Cave was a huge cave that was located on Guarma that could have been entered by the arch on Guarma and connected with La Capilla. That's where Javier is actually like hidden or trapped away. Their catacombs, which were also never added into the game. Either way, this is just another thing that we missed out on Guarma, resulting in being one of Red Dead Redemption 2's players' most hated areas. Canyon City. Canyon City is supposedly a huge city located in the Southwest Territory in Red Dead Redemption 1, and some people believe that's where the Vanderland Gang was before Blackwater, or a place where Dutch Arthur Hosea had already been before the game. There also is a Canyon City in Colorado, so I don't really know if this city would have been based on that, even though that is in Colorado, and they were probably saying it was more somewhere like California, but this one doesn't really have much information attached to it and is more for the people that just want all the lore of the game, but it probably would have been a similar size to like something like Sand and Tier 6 now are either mysteries that have really no answer at this point or can only be found through using the source code and breaking the game that way. Louis T. Aberison, Missing Treasure Hunter. Louis Tree Abrison is mentioned in a newspaper article where you can read it says after gaining fortune from finding valuable treasure on the mainland he went to Guarma to find this huge emerald and he was never heard from or seen after the fact so likely he passed away in some form there and never either like contacted his wife or maybe he just left his wife in general but he was likely supposed to be included in some sort of side activity in Guarma where you either probably save him or find his body, but this was likely just cut because similar to a lot of these other things in Guarma, they just stopped spending a lot of time in Guarma and just kind of cut a lot of the content out there. Dutch's wanted poster in Micah's camp. At Micah's base outside of Strawberry, you can find a shred of a Dutch Vanderlyn wanted poster after he abandons the camp. A lot of players have speculated this proves that Micah in some way was either working with or trying to work with the Pinkertons from the start, but I feel like this is pretty unlikely because it would probably make more sense to sell out the gang earlier than he did in the gang if he was really working for them, but it does mean that Micah was always kind of either thinking about it or wanted to like, you know, 
bring something back to Dutch. Be like, oh my God, you're so rich and famous at this point. Or just because, you know, a thousand bounty poster is kind of a cool thing to like collect. But I don't know. It's just kind of an interesting thing to see that Micah could have been either planning to sell out the gang from the start. And you can actually find that in his camp that, you know, he, he leaves beforehand. But because you can find some other newspaper scraps there where Micah, you know, does have a lot of his own exploits there. It could just be something he wants to like bring for Dutch and be like, yo, you have a crazy bounty. But I, I don't know. I, I don't really see Micah as that kind of like caring person in that way. Criard Slaughterhouse, right outside of Saint Denis, there was a former slaughterhouse that is marked on the map as Prince and Co. Before the game was released, there was like a leaked map or whatever that says it was supposed to be a gang hideout that the gang would eventually take over and stay in. Very similar to something like Shady Bell or Le Cay, where it was owned by other people and you fight your way in there and kick them out and then the gang takes over there. But this was likely scrapped just because it doesn't really make much sense for a gang of criminals to set up camp right next to where they're wanted and like right next to a big city where they can easily be found out and like taken over. I don't know, it just doesn't really make sense in general. And I think that's why Rockstar cut it from the game because you know, the fact that a gang of criminals was right there, it'd be probably pretty easy to find out where they actually were located. And like Shady Bell and Lakea are at least a pretty decent size away from like San Denis in general. Valentine's Curse. The people of Valentine believe that there was a curse placed on the town after there was a massacre of Native Americans in the town, killing the last ones left in the county. This is also somewhat referred to by Hosea when the gang is moving to Horseshoe Overlook. As he said, the Native Americans in these parts got a bad deal from the government forcing them to move out. And in my opinion, I don't really think there is any actual curse on the town. It's just one of those things where whenever something bad happens in the town, they're like, oh, this was back in the day, they, they set a curse on this town and this is why all these bad things are happening. It's just like the classic thing to like blame someone else's or like blame your own problem problems on something else because you don't wanna actually face the problems yourself. The Skinner Brothers and Dutch's Gang in Red Dead Redemption 1. Some people believe that Dutch's Gang in Red Dead Redemption 1 took over the remnants of the Skinner Brothers from Red Dead Redemption 2. And while this does have some credence based on the fact that both gangs operated in a similar area and were composed of like at least both Native Americans, I don't really believe it to be true. The Skinner Brothers were very brutal with their murders, like they murdered for fun. And while Dutch's gang seems bad, and it does seem like they've done a ton of bad things when you like read the newspaper and they're like, oh, they're murderers, they've done a lot of bad things to women, and they've done all these bad things overall, it doesn't really seem like they murdered for fun, and it seems like they murdered and like did all these bad things to get back at the system and society, and kind of like a classic Dutch thing where it's like, you know, I always hate society, and that's kind of why they murdered and robbed and did a lot of bad things to women was because they wanted to get back at society, not like the Skinner Brothers where they literally just murdered people for fun. Emerald Ranch in the Cayo Perico heist. In the Cayo Perico heist in GTA 5 online, you can find a bunch of different paintings in El Rubio's office that perfectly line up with Emerald Ranch and a lot of other characters in Red Dead Redemption 2. Supposedly, according to GTA like 5, El Rubio's grandparents were German and there could be some connection because there's like the German family that saves Arthur at points. They have a couple photos in there, paintings in there, and there's some connection to Emerald Ranch in that way, but I'm pretty sure this is more of just like a kind of Easter egg that's like, oh, there's kind of some connection between Red Dead Redemption 2 and GTA 5 instead of some actual like connections between the two games. It's more of just like, oh, they're they're kind of in a little bit of different like there's, it's, there's a ton of different easter eggs spread throughout the two games and i feel like that's more of what this is than like a direct connection between the two games which a lot of people were speculating where did dutch hide the blackwater money to this day it's not known where dutch actually hid the blackwater money from the heist but a lot of people believe that he hid it in his mother's grave because it is said that he hid it somewhere around blackwater because a lot of people in blackwater were actually digging for their money themselves but I feel like this is pretty unlikely that he actually hid it in her grave because it wouldn't be that hard for someone in Blackwater to realize that someone in the gravesite has Vanderlyn as their last name and that could be his mother and dig for the money in her grave. And I don't think the people in Blackwater were like not going to do this because they said they were digging up a ton of different places to find the money as well. So 
I'm assuming Dutch just hid it in some like actual regular place that other people didn't find because he did eventually have the money by the end of the game. And you know, he had to have, like no one else would have found it. And it's pretty likely that someone else would have found that he put it in his mother's grave eventually because it would have been pretty easy to see like some new dirt there or whatnot. I don't know. I don't think it was in his mother's grave, probably in just some random place where only Dutch would have, you know, thought to dig there. Sisica's prison tunnel. There used to be a tunnel under Sisica that could be explored in Red Dead Online, but was also included in single player. There wasn't any actual content, but you could explore it and find some interesting props, but they eventually removed it for some reason. And now if you go down into that cellar area, there's just a void there. But honestly, I don't really see this meaning that much and Rockstar was probably just gonna use it in a different part of the game or just didn't want people to explore it, and that's why they removed it from the game. There's not really much of a mystery there, in my opinion. The bag in Bronte's mansion. In Bronte's mansion, there is an expensive looking bag that will be able to glow like it is able to be searched while using Deadeye. It's actually not able to be searched though, and it's likely just a mistake by the developers, either highlighting something that they wanted to be able to search or just highlighting the wrong item. And it's just kind of a mistake there and not really anything that big of a mystery. Burnt Shack and Old Trail Rise. Old Trail Rise is an abandoned shack that can be found in Scarlet Meadows and in the basement you can find a secret stash worth $50 behind a stone, but there's not really that much like mystery to it. You can just find a secret stash in the basement. The Valentine Hide Map, which is a cut item that was supposed to be found in four different parts around Valentine. There's supposed to be many similar Native American items hidden around Valentine, likely relating to the Curse of Valentine, which was described a little bit earlier. And the Valentine Hide Map is actually based on a real life item that depicts the Sand Creek Massacre, where hundreds of Native Americans were butchered by the United States Army. And this is supposed to be to a reference to the supposed massacre that also took place in Valentine in the game, where again, they murdered the last of the uh, Native Americans in the Valentine area in Valentine itself, which started the curse. Compson Stead Well Mystery. Compson Stead is the former house of Jeremiah Compson, an enslaved person catcher that you can find in the Stranger Mission, The Antiquities of History. He has a well on his property, and if you climb down it, you can find coins and scratch marks on the wall, likely counting the days that someone was trapped in there. There are 62 different scratches and also a sun, three crosses, and three clouds there. But if you do go from the well and walk 62 paces north, where you find Compson for the end of the stranger mission, you can find bricks and behind one of them, there is a lock box with $60. And some people think this is a reference to Shawshank Redemption when Andy was confined in solitary confinement and referencing the end of the movie when he eventually does like get out. But I'm not 100% sure about that, but it is a pretty cool thing that if you actually do go to Compson there and then you go out, you like it kind of all fits together, like seeing the well stuff, but you're probably not gonna actually see the well stuff, go to Compson and then find the lock box. It's more likely you go to Compson and then just randomly find the lock box while exploring instead of actually doing the whole mystery thing. But I'm assuming this guy probably put the lock box there because the next person to go into the well, he wanted to have a nice time once they got out. Eagle's Nest Treasure. If you climb a mountain in the Grizzlies West, you can find a secret Eagle's Nest, which contains amylite and fluorite, which are two items that are supposed to like, you're, you can't do anything with them, but you can actually sell them to a fence for $25 each. And this is also just like a beautiful place to look at the rest of the map. So it's a great place in that regard as well, but there's not really that much mystery. It's just eagles often look for like really shiny objects and will put them in their nest. It's a pretty common thing. Cave Giant Animations, the cave giant that you can actually find in Amarino that I earlier talked about was actually supposed to be an NPC in the game and you can actually find him like feeding animals, doing a lot of things with the animals because that's the actual way you find him. You follow the animals and you can find them to his base, but they, it seems like this idea was scrapped in development and they basically took away all these animations that you can still see in the files nowadays. Undead Nightmare is canon. This to me is one of the worst theories in all of the entire Red Dead Redemption 1, Red Dead Redemption 2 community because if Undead Nightmare was real, it would literally invalidate the entire events of Red Dead Redemption 1 or at least the ending of the game. And I feel like that just makes this game just not that interesting. I don't know. I just think the whole point of Red Dead Redemption 1 is that John, you know, sacrifices his life. And the fact that Undead Nightmare would literally just ruin that whole part, just makes 
this one of the stupidest theories in my opinion and just it does not make sense in the whole scheme of rockstar and the whole scheme of their games this is clearly a non-canon event hosea's sickness in red dead redemption 2 it always seems like hosea has some sort of lung disease because he gives arthur he's like oh you arthur you need some medicine and you know hosea is like coughing all the time and i don't know it's, it's kind of interesting to see but hosea is a reasonably old man and smoked a lot in his earlier days so tuberculosis to me doesn't seem like the thing that uh, hosea has because he'd probably be dying a lot quicker like similar to how arthur dies so i don't really think he has tb but i think it's a lot more likely he has lung cancer and they wanted to like show someone dying from a similar way to like arthur dies so i think that's kind of interesting but it's pretty likely he has lung cancer because lung cancer takes a lot more time to be coming out like an onset disease than something like tuberculosis does and this is also why a lot of times in the game he's like oh i don't have most a lot of time left and you know that's kind of his reference to that abandoned mail cart north of fort wallace you can find an abandoned mail wagon and read a few of the letters one which explains the whole miriam wagner situation that was outlined in one of the earlier sections but honestly everything in the cart is just a bunch of tiny lore details that don't really add up to much and just kind of you know add a little bit to the game's lore and it doesn't really do much to actually like spread a mystery i feel like the miriam wagner thing is a lot more interesting of an actual mystery Lake Isabella in the shack letter. In an abandoned shack by Lake Isabella, the player can find a letter upside down that talks about how the Saint Denis publisher slandered the trader's Paris green supply, which was a toxic substance used in paint and in insecticide. But this is actually a letter that can be found all around the map. But I believe the only place that you can actually like read it, read it is in the Lake Isabella shack, but you can literally find it in so many different places around the map. It's in like the man-made Newtons, place it's in this little shack here just all around the map somehow and i guess this guy sent it out to every single person he knew because he didn't like his thing getting slandered but it is really interesting that you know this toxic substance that this guy had really he was he was calling out getting slandered by the san denis newspaper even though clearly he was doing some bad things with it and he probably knew the thing was toxic from the beginning the lake monster the lake slash river monster is the name of a unused model in the red dead redemption 2 files along with some sounds that sound very mechanical similar a lot to something from like war of the worlds like the movie there where it, it doesn't sound like a human being but it also doesn't really sound like fully like a machine or like it doesn't sound like an animal it doesn't sound fully like a machine kind of somewhere in the middle and there's actually some sounds like this from the actual game and likely this was part of some side mission and was something that you could only vaguely interact with because there's not that much information and it was cut early in development but i'm pretty sure if you killed it you could like actually get some crustacean features and stuff so it seems like it was like some crab some machine at the same time some really really weird stuff but it was just something that was probably either human built or some kind of like supernatural thing because just everything coming from it sounded absolutely insane next up we got strange skulls in lemoyne and in lemoyne there are a bunch of different skull piles that seem to be animal skulls likely some type of monkey that seems to be as large or the same size as human skulls so this is likely an extremely large monkey with a huge brain no animal in the game actually lines up with this so this is likely either a reuse access or a hint to an animal from a different continent but it just seemed like a regular monkey or like maybe you could say it's a scat sasquatch but i very much doubt it skinwalkers lots of people on the internet believe that there's some sort of skinwalker in red dead redemption 2 probably something having to do with the native americans as skinwalkers are from their mythology but there's no actual evidence to back this up and clearly there's not really that much mythological stuff going on in red dead redemption 2 well there is some stuff it's very like you know not out there on the surface so i don't really think skinwalkers are a thing in red dead redemption 2 i think this is kind of just you know people getting a little scared by playing the game They're, it's like the hero brian of red dead redemption 2 the devil has got into that beast the devil has gotten into that beast is a quote that can be found in a tumbleweed church in red dead redemption 2 and is a reason why people believe that tumbleweed actually is haunted like I said in the tumbleweed is haunted section, I believe this is mostly just a messed up cheat code that Rockstar kind of forgot to put in the, to the game and they wanted to put it into a church because it's like kind of funny that you're talking about the devil getting into something in a church, especially on the the like the main part of the church where it's like the, the church is wherever the, the preacher speaks from. So I don't know, I feel like it's pretty interesting and it's most likely just Rockstar trying to troll us. 
Sawbone Clearing unmarked grave. Near Sawbone Cleary, where Mrs. Londonderry lives, there is a grave with Bennett engraved on the wood, and creepy music will play when you get near it. This is likely a reference to the Bennett brothers who all killed each other after they found gold and one ran off with it. The Bennett brothers are also from Annisburg, which is right by the grave. So, I mean, it's pretty much one of them and is likely a reference due to one of them killing the other two. So, yeah. Leader X Tree Carving Around the mysterious hill home in Red Dead Redemption 2, you can find a tree that has a carving of words on it, but the carvings will disappear if you get too close. If you actually read the carvings, they say Leader X, and by the home, you can find a man who talks about the Bennett brothers and how that they hid their goal near a tree with carvings on it. So it could be a reference to that, or it could literally just be a glitch that disappears when they get too close. I know a lot of people also think it's some reference to the Chelonians. There's a ton of different mysteries with this, but this is likely just some kind of glitch and kind of just ruins some kind of mystery that they actually hid here. And the last and final entry in this iceberg is the third meteorite. A lot of people have speculation on what the third meteorite is, but in Red Dead Redemption 2, there are two different meteorites that you can find in the game, and people believe that there is a third meteorite that you could also find in the game. The third meteorite, in my opinion, and a lot of other people's opinions, likely crashed in Moonstone Pond because of the name Moonstone, likely being a reference to a meteor, and the actual shape of the pond, which looks like a meteorite crash site. And also an NPC says that a woman fished a rock from Moonstone Pond, so that could have been the meteorite. And just in general, I feel like it kind of really fits the description of like a place where a meteorite would crash. It kind of looks all like that, and it just kind of looks like the other meteorite crashing areas, but it is kind of interesting that they already have like a name for it and whatnot, even when this meteorite could have been, you know, earlier or later in the game during the time period. Holy shit, if you did make it this far in the video, I very much appreciate you guys and I hope you guys enjoyed this video because it took a little bit to make and it's just a really interesting thing to dive deep into all these Red Dead Redemption 2 conspiracy theories and mysteries. And if you do want to see some more videos, they should be popping up now. So go click on them right now.